Hey guys, what is up? Zero here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Love and Literature. So, in the last episode, we had lunch with Natsuki, and it was a nice time, you know? We got to see a CG. Nice times. <laughs> so, now we are going, I think we're just walking back from the lunchroom, I think, really? Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh wait, she gave me her, she gave me, we read her our poem at lunch, too. So yeah. So, let's proceed. We walked together downstairs, the empty tray in hands. We stopped in front of the doors leading out to the foyer. I put the train into a trash can and turned to her. So, I'll see you at the club room? She nods. Yeah, share with me last, we can just get back to reading, okay? She says to me, those beautiful pink eyes staring at me. I smile. I can't wait. She turns away. I can see a trace of blush on her cheeks. Alright, bye. She gives a small wave, a hurt she gives a small wave and hurriedly walks away to class. I give a final look and turn away. My heart feels like it could explode, but if it did, I wouldn't care. I die a happy man. I didn't even get to hang out with her that much yet. <laughs> We had lunch, and now I can die. <laughs> Nothing is better than lunch. <laughs> Oof, now I feel bad for ending chapter 5 like that when chapter 6 was literally right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Chapter 6. Daijobu! Everything will be Daijobu. I think that means like, alright. Third period. Virian knowledge class. When we look at the data provided by the media outlets, we discover that the information provided by eyewitnesses tends to, fl to fluctuate between accounts. Some describe the, uh, the assailant as firing 12 rounds, while others describe him as firing 6. You may ask yourself, how can this be? Why is there such a glaring variation amongst people's accounts of the incident? One possible explanation for such... Dr. Kido, my 6th period instructor, continued to drone on to a relatively silent class, busy scribbling notes down in their journals. My journal, a simple spiral notebook, laid open on my desk, but it had been a while since I had jotted down any notes this period. What, while theory and knowledge had always been an interesting class to me, my mind was occupied elsewhere today. I stared down at my desk, fingers flicking the edges of Natsuki's poem as I read it for perhaps the 20th time that day. My eyes grazed over the stanzas over and over again, soaking up every word. Well, my finger brushed the outline of her signature, a simple scribble in the corner of the paper. I kept turning the lines over and over like a burger patty on the grill. Not taking anything away from it, she wrote a very good poem, using simple words to give vivid descriptions. It's ultimately easier to digest than Yuri's abuse of complicated vocabulary or Monica's abstract view of reality. Jesus Christ, why is he calling out everyone else's poem styles? <laughs> Because this is a Natsuki mod, and only Natsuki matters. <laughs> yeah, fuck everyone else, apparently. Like, Jesus Christ, they're all good poems. Dick. Cunt. <laughs> oh my god, oh, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading it, and I was locked on the idea that this was a, con a confession of affection reading between the lines. It had to be, or at least, the very at least a hint of such emotions. Nevertheless, the very idea made my heart pound faster than I've ever felt it beat. Just one thing troubled me, however, the intro. They still couldn't piece together what exactly the smoke and the ugly thoughts was referring to. When I recall our conversations last time, when she started crying to me about the Parfait Girls volume. What did she say? Things are really hard for me right now? What did she mean? What could possibly be troubling her so much to the point of a breakdown? My mind failed to think of a reason. Chances are it's school related. A lot of students are getting in over their heads about the end of the semester. Everyone is trying to get their late work turned in before the gradebooks closed, solidifying their academic standing to potential universities. Even the best and brightest students, like Monica, would be lying if they weren't fretting just a little bit. I glanced out the window. Call it stereotyping, but I couldn't help but connect Nazi's exhibited pers persona to an anime cliche called Sundere, or a character that acts cold to the main character, slash protagonist. In this case, myself. Later, they begin to be friendly to them, and depending on the series, fall in love. 
initial hostility of my joining the club, refusing to let me help at getting the Ray Girls volume down, then slowly warming up to me by taking the umbrella and accepting my lunch. One key trait was missing from this equation, however. Still, my mind lingered at the idea it was a giant coincidence, or just unintentional. Natsuki didn't like me. She thinks I'm a creep or just trying to be play nice to get with her. Are these thoughts the result of my fear and anxiety once again taking root? Yes, they are, because she clearly smiled at you and ate lunch with you. <laughs> How does she think you're a creep? <laughs> and even said, hey, let's finish reading some more. Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> I just, I don't understand. How can you get, she thinks I'm a creep, from her <laughs> literally inviting you to want to read more? <laughs> mm, I don't know, man. This man's dumb. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him so much. Nibbling my ability to think clearly? Yes! <laughs> There's still a good chance Jen interested in me in that way, and it just thinks of us as friends. There you go. Think logically. <laughs> Once again, I try to give us an example, Zero. I froze, looking up at the mention of my name. My mouth turned to sand. Could you repeat the question, I hate sir? When that happens. Yeah, well, that's why you don't zone out in class. <laughs> Monica, God. Pretty sure that's happened. I'm pretty sure you've, you've done that too. <sighs> I actually can't remember if I have or not. You most likely have. Probably. Everyone has. I just say I don't know. Could you repeat the question, sir? And I said this with a mismanaged air of confidence. A few laughs. Dr. Kido squinted through his wireframe glasses. What is one concept that could be applied to the data? I quickly glanced down at my notes. I felt the itching heat rush up and down my body, the kind I always get when I'm put on spot like this, even if I was supposed to be paying attention. My baby began to walk up. I could feel about a dozen eyes focused on me, watching my every movement, waiting for a response. My mind spurred. I flipped back a page into my notes. Uh, has sensory perception been mentioned yet? It could be applied by saying our disabilities affect our ability to perceive reality. I looked up with a hint of uncertainty. That was a good enough answer, right? The class nodded in a general agreement. Dr. Kido smiled. Yes, I was hoping you'd bring that up. He turned back to face the board, now tracing back to our previous lesson about animals or seeing the wor world differently from others and yada yada yada. To trace the sweat from my forehead. I could have ended very badly. Gotta remember to keep an ear out. I get back into my thoughts. The question is, how do I act from here? Do I start flirting with her? Do I wait and see if she flirts with me first at all? How the hell do you even flirt? I never dated anyone before, and I have next to no experience when it comes to this sort of romantic stuff. That's assuming she has interest at all, anyway. Maybe I should just slowly start to drop hints to see if anything happens. The bell rang. I souped up my papers and shoved them into my bag. Just two more periods, and then the literature club. Blow through sharing poems, then spend the rest of the hour reading with Natsuki. I took in a lung full of air and slowly sighed. <sighs> just relax, everything will be fine. I ran my fingers through my hair. I exited the class. He's gonna fuck this up, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the final period bell rang, and I hastily grabbed my things and stepped into the hallway, moving past the crowds of students. I stepped into the foyer and took in the view. No clouds hung over the skies, but sunlight still shined down. The air was unusually humid, and I didn't enjoy it at all. I adjusted my shirt collar and made my way to the fourth year's building. Into the building, and walked upstairs. Like usual after school hours, the halls were relatively, were relatively free of students. I nodded to a passing teacher, making her way down the stairs. Down the hallway, I could hear Sayori and Monica chatting indistinctly, though I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. I slowly crept up to the door and leaned out to where they couldn't see me on first glance. I could see papers strewn across the teacher's desk, with Monica standing behind it, the chair pushed back to the wall. She was thumbing through a folder, her bag hanging half open on, on the chair. Natsuki was sitting at the closet desk to the teachers, nose deep in parfait girls, which doesn't make I was supposed to read. Sarah was sitting on top of the desk, facing away from the class president, kicking her feet ever so slightly like a child in a grocery store cart. On her face, I saw the same distant expressionless stare I saw a day ago. I felt a chill. 
It's sort of complicated, having to differentiate between one variable and the next, because the OS can get confused and isn't sure which program you want to initiate. And then you'd have to write out a separate line of code telling it what to do. Monica was saying, her voice droning. Nazi seemed indifferent to her rambling, while well, Sayori nodded absentmindedly. Was she trying to explain one of her classes to her? Judging from the lingo she was using, it sounded like a computer class or something. That would explain Sayori's relative indifference to her. What Monica was saying sounded really complicated. And Sayori's constantly bouncing around from topic to topic. I remember back in our primary school years, our language instructor had assigned us to write a short essay, like two paragraphs, about our favorite thing to do at home. Sarah had just finished writing it, not eating snacks, usually mine, wanted to toss it because she remembered she liked sleeping more. It's a tad difficult to keep her attention focused on one thing for longer than a class period. If that's the case, then maybe, maybe that's all that face means. Just boredom. Why are we still outside? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we walk into the class already? <laughs> oh. How long has he been monologuing to himself? <laughs> Disconnected. Daydreaming. <laughs> and ultimately worrying for nothing. Once again, I let my mind take things too far and exaggerate reality. I need to learn how to let these things happen so easily. And they stepped into the classroom. Finally! After 84 years. Yeah, like seriously, he was just standing there muttering to himself in the fucking hallway. <laughs> Sorry, not muttering to himself, just talking in his head. He was just looking like a creep, looking through the classroom for like three to four minutes. <laughs> Monica's just like, So, um, we saw you looking out through the window, <laughs> through the door. Are you okay? People, people, walk by, people walking by him like... What's wrong with that guy? He's a creep. He's spying all those girls in there. <laughs> yeah. Yuri's was by- it's just three girls, so it's like, what if Yuri was just waiting for us to walk in? He's <laughs> like, uh, excuse me, are you gonna walk in? <laughs> <laughs> you coming? Yeah, I uh... hey Guys, I think we broke zero. <laughs> <laughs> the three girls glanced up. Sorry, shot me a big smile and hopped off the desk. She rushed towards me, arms open. She embraced me in a big hug. He there you are! I was just about to call you to ask where you were! Her and Asuki chuckled a little and I felt my face go red. I glanced at Monica, in a mixture of accepting embarrassment and confusion. Sayori, class barely ended. I couldn't have gotten here any quicker. You're outside for like three to four minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just about to say you were standing out there for four minutes. <laughs> Don't you lie to them. <laughs> Monica clears her throat, taking charge. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Zero. I'm glad that you showed up, because there's a bit of an issue we have to discuss. Mine started to worry at first before I remembered what the issue was about, thinking back to Sarah and Monica's previous conversation. Sarah released me from her death grip hug and happily hopped back to her spot. I fixed my now crooked blazer and dusted myself off. I slowly walked to the desk of Jason Tanatsky's and sat atop of it, putting my bag down in the chair. I tried to put on a cool demeanor. Sure, what's up? Monica smiled. I'm sure you know about the festival coming up, right? I don't need to go over it. Monica began, propping herself up against the teacher's desk, pushing aside a few of her papers to make room. I nodded. I mean, who in the school hasn't heard of the festival? Every year towards the end of the fall grading season, the administrators and school board throw a big celebration festival on the first two days of the last week before the December break. Everyone could go, regardless of whether you passed or not. Food, drinks, and lively traditional slash modern music galore as students take the load off in their Adorus studies during school years. Ado Adorus. Adorus studies. A common feature of these festivals were, uh, were lots of showcases for all the various activities and clubs the school had to offer. And for university representatives as well, who could get their name out there to the student body, cream of the crop. For clubs and groups, like a debate club for example, it's a good way to advertise to more students for the next year, rather than just bulletin board flyers and morning announcements. Obviously, Monica would be trying her hardest to make the Literature Club's ex exhibition the best it can be. I know that you've only just joined, but with what Sayori and I have planned for the event, we really need all hands on deck, including yours. Natsuki and Yuri already have their plans together, as well as myself and Sayori. You're the only one left out. Speaking of Yuri... I have glanced around the room. Where is she? Is she alright? Monica gave an affirmative wave. Oh, she said she wasn't going to be here. Doctor's appointment, but she'll be here in time to start work tomorrow. She told me on the group chat. 
She paused. Which you haven't been added to yet. Shit. I might add to that after class. Monica's just saying shit now. Yeah. How professional of you, Monica. Yeah, Monica. Oh, that's so in character. <laughs> yeah. I love when Monica says shit. Yeah. See, I what mean, Hmm? It's okay, it's okay if she swears at appropriate times. I was about to like, say. I was just about to say that. Mm-hmm. Like, at an appropriate time, or, like, if the festival's just going, like, wrong, and then she's just like, shit! <laughs> like, that'd be yeah, hilarious. Not... But, like, just it's something as small as that seems very just, like, out of character and weird. <laughs> like, if she muttered it to herself, then that'd be okay. Yeah. But... Group oh, no. chat. It's just weird. <laughs> Group chat, huh? That'll be interesting. She gestured to herself. Myself and Yuri are going to be working together and creating decorations to spruce up our little area. Getting the right theme in place and all that? She gestured to Natsuki, half peeking at her Parfait Girls volume. Natsuki's going to be baking snacks and treats to offer passerby slash potential members as a way to lure them in and pique their interest. Sayori's going to be in charge of general schedule and order of our booth, running checklists and that sort of stuff. Making sure we do stuff on time, and... She twirled her wrist. Well, you get the idea. Initially, I was going to have Sayori and Natsuki working together so things would be even, but since you joined, that kind of threw things off balance, you being the odd man out. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm happy you joined, but it just means I have to shake up the order a bit. The realization slowly came to me as she talked. What I'm getting at is that you have to choose between Sayori or Natsuki with who you would like to work with. Tomorrow is just going to be a sort of research day, like getting recipes in order and choosing a theme to work on. But I was hoping everyone would start actual work on Sunday, if that's alright with you. I don't understand why, but I just felt my mind lock up. I wasn't prepared for this. I opened my mouth to say something, but no words fell out. That same itching heat that I had in Dr. Keto's class crept up in my body again. Uh. An awkward pause. Could you excuse me? I sat up and rushed out the door, nearly tripping on my feet. Zero? I heard Sarah call out my name, but I didn't turn around. I hastily exited the class. I shoved the bathroom door open on my shoulder, the door clanging on the door stopper. So it was after school hours, the place was naturally deserted. I could hear the soft gurgling of water rushing through the pipes and the walls. I paced around the sinks, loudly tapping my foot in agitation. This is a disaster. How the hell am I supposed to pick? If I choose Sayori, I'm losing an entire day I could use to get to know Natsuki better and get closer to her. If I pick Natsuki, it makes Sayori feel unwanted and maybe even hurt her feelings. Okay, see, I like this. This is an actual dilemma. <laughs> yeah. Because at first, I thought he was just going to be like, Huh, oh, I'll just go with Natsuki. It's an, it's an easy answer. I was going to be like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I like this. They're actually, he's actually smart enough to know that this is a pretty bad choice to make. There's no way to actually win here! I turned on the tap in the sink and a thin stream of cool water gushed out. I mean, you technically could- and a lot of mods don't do this. Some mods do this, some mods don't. But it's like, they never actually explain this. Why can't you just work with one of them on Saturday, then work with the other one on Sunday? <laughs> yeah... Cause like, I don't understand the problem. Like I, like I said, I'm not gonna criticize this mod for not doing that, cause a lot of mods don't actually bring that up. But some mods actually do bring it up, and they're like, you know, I can just help Yuri on Friday, and Sayori on Saturday. Like, some of them actually do that, and it's smart, because it's like, yeah, why the fuck didn't he do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, he honestly could have just saved all the arguments and shit, and just helped multiple people on different days. There's more than one day on a weekend. <laughs> At least in what the DDLC school is, because I know, I think in Japan, they have school on Saturday. But I think the way DDLC worked, they didn't have school on Saturday. <laughs> They do? I'm pretty sure in Japan they have school on Saturday. They only get off on Sunday. Oh what? Yeah, they yeah, yeah, they yeah, they have school on Saturday. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. They have school on Saturdays. They only get off on Sunday. Why? Japan really put, takes their education to the next level. I don't want to go to Japan. I don't want to live there. You don't have to I live there. That's why most people just visit. <laughs> So yeah, maybe that's why he can't help multiple people. But I mean, you could help them after school. <laughs> but if we're technically speaking, 
This isn't in Japan. <laughs> well, this mod, I think this mod, the location is Japan. Because he drinks like Ramun bottles. Or I think someone told me how to pronounce it. I forgot. I think it was Ramune? Ramune? I don't know. I have to figure it out. But then that's a Japan drink. So I think they actually are in Japan. I just see. <laughs> I turn all the tap in the sink and a thin stream of cool water gushed out. I dipped my hands under the stream and rubbed my face, the cool water dripping down my chin. I cut my hands and took a sip, filtered and pure. I glanced up in the mirror and noticed how disheveled my hair had become. Disheveled my hair had became. I quickly combed it back into shape with my damp fingers. I ripped a few paper towels from a dispenser and patted my face dry. Come on, you're freaking out over literally nothing. All you have to do is pick between them. Just go with Natsuki and try to figure out what's going on with Sayori later. Maybe try and go talk to her on Saturday? That sounds like a good idea, at least. There you go! So wait, they are off on Saturday in this then! <laughs> Why don't you just help her on Saturday?! <laughs> yeah, what? I tossed the paper towels in the waste bin and took another look in the mirror. I straightened up my pose and tried to look confident, relaxed. Okay, maybe there's still school on Saturday. If there's not still school on Saturday, then I'm honestly about to question why he couldn't just help her on Saturday. <laughs> mm. I freaked out over nothing and ended up embarrassing myself. Christ, I really need to... I heard a knock at the door. Zero? Are you in there? I heard a muffled voice call. Monica. Oh, it's Monica. <laughs> Zero? Are you in there? I gently opened the door. It's Monica hanging! <laughs> What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Monica stood outside. Zero, is everything all right? You seemed upset. A shadow of worry was cast on her face. I shook my head. Oh, everything's fine. Just constipated. <laughs> I awkwardly laugh. Jesus, did I really just say that? Monica shifted on her feet. Oh, I see. A pause. <laughs> Do you need what? more time, or...? She seemed to back off a bit. I hastily shake my head no. No, no, fine now. Thank you. No worries. I smile, trying to push the awkwardness of the situation away. Great! Shall we go back? I nod enthusiastically. She turned on her heel and started walking back to class, myself warily, warily following. I can see why Monica doesn't have a- doesn't- I'm starting to see why Monica doesn't have a crush on him in this mod. <laughs> doesn't have a crush on the MC in this story. He's kind of gross. He's kind of fucking weird. A weirdo. I don't like him. <laughs> like his first thing was because I'm constipated. <laughs> it's like, why did I say that? <laughs> why didn't you just say, I'm sorry, I was sick? I don't something? know. It was the first thing that could come up into his mind. I, I appreciate the dialogue. I thought it was funny. My god. <sighs> yeah. Ugh. When we returned, Sarah and Natsuki were busy talking to each other, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. Sarah glanced up and gave me a worried expression. Are you okay, Zero? She hopped off her spot, but I put up a defensive hand. I'm fine, just had to use the restroom. Recusively, she sat back down. I immediately felt bad. I wasn't trying to be rude. Yes, well, where were we now? Monica's down in the teacher's chair. Zero, do you know who you'd want to work with this weekend? I glanced at Natsuki. She blushed and looked back down at Barfair Girl's volume, the book shelf with the cover facing up. I glanced at Sayori, looking down, her white shoes tapping against the desk. She looked up and gave me a genuine smile. I felt myself start to lock up again. Fucking hell, say something! Well... I adjust my collar, gears turning. I always wanted to give baking a try. That is, if you're okay with that, Natsuki. Nessie perks up, a smile breaking across her face. She just nods. Yeah, it's whatever. You can help me get the supplies I need. Sorry, looked indifferent, a smile persisting on her face. What was she thinking? Alright, that settles that then. Monica simply pulls out her phone stylus and starts to scribble down notes. I coughed. Ugh, oh, so Sayori. I just- It's fine, Zero. Don't worry, my job's really boring anyway. I wouldn't want to make you unhappy. He- <laughs> She smiled. I returned the smile, but my mind sticks to that last part. I wouldn't want to make you unhappy. Even if Sayori's task was as like exciting as watching paint dry, I'd have fun anyway because I'd be with her. She's my best friend. She... she knows that, right? Should I say something? Try to affirm that? 
I pause. I think the problem is she knows that she's your best friend. <laughs> I don't think the problem is that she- I don't think the problem is that she doesn't know she's your best friend. The problem is that she is your best friend. <laughs> because she's like, uh, I want to be more than friends, but he just he friend zones me. But he's a dense asshole, yeah. so... No, she certainly knows that. She doesn't bore me. It's always made me happy, and I've done the same. I should be enough. Monica claps her hands together. All right, even though one member's short today, I'd still like everyone to share their poems. And then tomorrow, Yuri will return, and we can get working on our tasks. Monica reached into her bag. I'm especially proud of this one. Oh, okay, we're skipping the poem sharing. All right, nice. Or not. <sighs> Flowers. The petals drip down into a dark puddle, splashes of color swirling my eyes. I collect them and hold them all close. Their sweet smell entrancing me. The smell fades, the petals dry out and, crum and crumble. I walk back to the floor, only there is no more color. The flowers have died, only the lingering smell of death remains. Get out of my head. Honestly, if you don't think there's something wrong with her from this poem, RM's, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna kill him. <laughs> Yeah. Zero? Hmm? I glance up from Sarah's paper. What did you think? I pause. It's very... well, it's not what I expect you to write. It's a tad dark, don't you think? Yeah. She drew circles on the desk with her finger. I wanted to, well, try something different. Harry's poem was sort of similar to this, and I wanted to try to make my own version of that. Ah, well, it certainly got across a lot of emotions. It's very... weighty? He... thank you. You could say the same about your poem, Zero. It had a lot of emotion driving it, too. <laughs> Thanks. I stood up. Thanks for sharing. Sarah just smiled. And he noticed nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ten out of ten. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Monica was sitting down at the teacher's desk, tapping away at her small laptop. Behind her on the whiteboard, I could see a couple of equations and assorted numbers scrawled with a green marker. I wonder what she was working on. She glanced up and immediately shut her laptop. Oh, hey! Sorry, I was just working on something for my coding class. She gestured to the scrawlings on the board. That's what all that is. <laughs> I shared the laugh. Hey, it's cool. It looks pretty complicated. She sighed and pushed her laptop aside. It really is. Our instructor is making us write our own little program as a final grade before a break, and it's driving me nuts! If I flopped with this, it could ruin my grade. I see. Well, hopefully you can get all that figured out. Then again, what's someone like you have to worry about? I'm sure you'll create something better than anyone in your class could. Monka looked up at me, those pretty emeralds shining. Thank you, Zero. That means a lot. You sure do have a way to make a girl feel a certain way, huh? She laughed and I blushed. Anyways, poems. Monica hands her paper to me. Hiroshima! <laughs> Nani? <laughs> oh my god, wait! <laughs> Nani? <laughs> wait a minute. Oh my god! <laughs> that noise you just made was really funny. <laughs> what noise? <laughs> You like inhaled and exhaled at the same time while making it all. <laughs> I don't know what noise I made. I'm just still freaking out because I'm like, oh, she just made a poem about Hiroshima. <laughs> what the fuck? What's that? You don't know what Hiroshima, Monica? No. I don't know what that is. I'm How sorry. do you not know what that is? Uh, if you explain it, to that's me, where we. Able... That's where we bombed, freaking. <laughs> That's where we uh, bombed Japan! Uh, um, did you not know that America bombed Japan? No. You, what, you, know, you don't know anything about Hiroshima or Pearl, Pearl Harbor? No! <laughs> Why are you learning in history? I'm, I live in Canada! Still! <laughs> Part of it. Hiroshima.
Hiroshima, Hi all right, Hiroshima, it's a city in Japan, and it was destroyed, and we bombed it in World War II. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all you have to know. You have to go back to that noise you made in the recording. I don't know how to make that noise. <laughs> it was so funny, I don't know how to recreate <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm like really tired right now, so I'm not sure if Pearl Harbor was what they bombed for us. That might have been someone else bombing us. I'm like super tired, and I can't honestly think. I think Pearl Harbor is that is like because I think they bombed us and then we bombed them. If I remember correctly. I mean, yeah, that's how wars work. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Just... World War Two. Yeah, it was bombed by Japan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I looked it up real quick. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Yeah, we were bombed by Japan. Okay. My memory is right. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's because you're Canadian. I don't know. I'll... Yeah, I'll... I have no idea what that is. I'll assume that's why. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I guess, I mean, uh, if you're American, it would have... They would have definitely been like, how the fuck do you not know? But you're Canadian. Canadian, you get... You just... Do you learn about Canadian history? Yeah. Okay, that's why. <laughs> we learn about both. We, we learn about Canadian and American How history, much, am, much have you gotten to World War II? We talked about it a little bit. I mean, that's like the biggest moment in World War II. I don't... If it has been said, I don't remember any trace of it. I was like, that's like the, one of the biggest moments in World War II. What, you guys only yeah. talk about Hitler? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that it? <laughs> Just Hitler? <laughs> Basically. He wasn't the entire thing. I mean, he was definitely played a big role. Yeah, but... Anyway. We, we learned about Canadian history. Yeah, now history. you learned about her poem. Hiroshima. We bombed it. So now I can read it. <laughs> My breathing is shallow. The hair is too thin. People are screaming. They think they might win. My vision is blurry. My heart rate is slow. No therapy can save me. From what I've seen, what happened? It's all nuclear. Well, Jesus Christ. Oh. That's sad. <laughs> Monica's statement earlier was right. She should be proud of this one. It was, from what I gathered, a betrayal of victim of the Hiroshima nuclear bombing in 1945. Staggering around this ruined city, blinded and dying. Knowing but also not knowing what happened to them and to their home. Seven years later, and it's still a touchy subject, but Monica captured its essence perfectly. Wow, that was... moving. I wasn't expecting something like this. You captured the emotions of that day very well. Thank you. She went silent for a moment. I didn't really enjoy writing it, but I felt inspired by it after doing some research on the bombings from my history class. Just something I felt should be written, so I took that chance with, the, with this being our, po our last poems to share. An awkward silence. He pointed to my paper. Hopefully yours isn't as depressing. <laughs> I handed her my paper. She quickly started reading it, her eyes going across each line. After a while, she spoke up. Do you mind if I say something about it? I shrugged. Sure, I'm open to criticism. It's not a crit criticism, but... She leaned in slightly, her voice quieter. Is this a love poem? I blushed again. I could feel myself start to sweat. What? I laughed awkwardly. What makes you say that? Monica smiled. Don't worry, Zero. I won't spoil your secret, but you did make it kind of obvious with your word usage. It's very cute, though. It's a clever way to admit how you feel to me. I freeze. Huh? Monica bursted out laughing, <laughs> her ribbon and her hair bouncing slightly. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Zero. I couldn't help but join the laugh. I mean, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> well, thank you for that. That was, okay, that was a nice move. That was a nice touch. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I take my paper back. Monica gave me a laughing smile, but it didn't help me with, didn't help with putting me at ease. <laughs> she looks so, she looks so happy with herself with that smile. Yeah. One thought troubled me. If she doesn't think I wrote it for her, who does she think I wrote it for? I turn around. She probably knows who you wrote it for. <laughs> yeah. You think she doesn't pay attention to her club? <laughs> This is Monica we're talking about Yeah. Here. Practically hopping, I walked over to Nazi's little spot, tucked away in the back corner desk. 
Because once again, those be deep and parfait girls are eyes intently reading the pages. It's off her desk with the manga box set from the closet. Hey! She glanced up from her parfait, for parfait girl's volume. <laughs> hey! I pointed out the desk in front of hers. Mind if I sit here? Well, of course not, dummy! What are you gonna do? Just stand there all day? I chuckled, setting my bag down on the floor. Isn't that the next volume I'm supposed to read? I pointed to the book in her hands. Yeah, so? I was just rereading it. And I smiled. Cool, I do that sometimes, especially when it's with a good series. Rather than just letting it sit and collect dust on my shelf. I also looked back up, gently putting the volume down. Y you have a collection? She seemed surprised. Yeah, complete editions. I have it tucked away above my desk. It's only a couple of my favorite series that I've read over the years, though it's probably not as big as your collection. She glanced away. Actually, Perfagos is the only physical collection I have. What? What? Why? It's kind of surprising she doesn't actually have her own series. Not that I'm making fun of her, but it's usual people, well, my friends at least, do. Physical over digital. Who cares? Mind your own business! Annoyance laced her voice. Alright, alright. A pause. Hey, also... She paused, adjusting the Parfagro's volume. I need to give you my number so we can start planning for Sunday. I nodded. Sure, no problem. I quickly pulled out my phone and opened my contacts. What is it? She literally started to write off her number to me, waiting for me to finish and putting the digits. I added her and put my phone away. Don't make me regret it! I laughed. Don't worry. I ran my finger along the edge of the desk. My mind wandered back to this morning and how I got to finish the Parfait Girls volume just barely before the first bell. I dug into my bag and carefully pulled out the volume, holding it up to her. So anyway, since we've already shared poems, you want to get back to Parfait Girls? Her eyes lit up. Oh yeah! She was out of the manga box set and stood up from her desk. She made a motion with her head to follow her, and walking towards an empty spot against the wall, next to the closet door. She, she brushed off a spot on the ground and placed the box set there. She sat down and patted a spot next to her, beckoning me to join her. I bent down on one knee and took a spot next to her. I really hope we don't sit here reading this entire thing with her. <laughs> How long has it been? 37 minutes. <laughs> hmm? I said okay. <laughs> Running her- I think this chapter ends soon. Running her fingers along the binding of the volume, she slipped the previous book back into its holder and handed me hers. She grabbed the next volume and opened it up, immediately starting to read. I looked up. Sarah so was sitting in a chair under the window by the teacher's desk, where Monica was facing the whiteboard, scribbling new equations onto the board. I opened up my volume and began to read. Okay, there we go, we do just skip the reading. Good. How dare you look at me like that! <laughs> I was reading and you're going to sleep! <laughs> my heart pounded in my chest. She was right there. Nancy's head was resting on my shoulder, body pushed up against mine. She sat with her legs and tucked next to her chest. Sunlight gleamed through the windows, reflecting in her hair, giving her an almost angelic glow. I thumbed to the next page, taking in the intricacy drawn the, in the intricately drawn art. Credit to whoever wrote this, the style's very cute. It almost reminds me of a cross between typical 1990s Sailor Moon styles and more chibi pop team epic. More chibi pop team epic. Interesting blend that works really well. I can smell her on me. It was such, it was such a vibrant and dizzying scent. Like strawberries and what I imagine rainbows would smell like. Call me a creep, but it's about how I expected her to smell like. You are a creep. <laughs> So pleasant. I continue to read. At this part of the story, one of the girls has a crush on a boy who works at sweet shops at a mall, and the other three girls are following her around on a date with the boy, and... Without moving my head, I glance over to Natsuki. She had her own volume opened up in her lap, but she wasn't reading it. She was intently looking over at my own volume, unmoving. I cleared my throat. You okay, Natsuki? She seemed startled. She clutched the edge of her own volume. Y yeah what's up? She pushed the back strand of her pink hair behind her ear. I shook my head. Nothing, just seemed like you're more interested in my volume than your own. Well, it's just, I mean, that's a good part, and I wanted to see your reaction. That's all. What's wrong with that? Is, is it like getting it's brighter the, every it's the, Yeah, I'm about to say, the background is like... 
changing with her. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because they're calling a different picture. Mm -hmm. But like the background, they like did something to the background mm -hmm. where it was like brighter. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I'm lurking, so, it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. I'm telling back my voice. Hey, nothing's wrong. I did the same thing when I'm introducing my friends to a new series. I'm curious as to how they react to some of my favorite parts. I know you're on the shoulder. You're fine. She blushed and turned away. Th thanks, Zero. I adjusted myself in my spot. Don't mention it. I looked up and almost froze. Through the rows and rows of desks, Zero was silently watching me. Not like buggy eyes or anything, but just silently watching me from her desk. Almost dead stare, unsmiling. Out of instinct, I waved. She took a second before she waved back, almost excitedly. A smile spread across her face before she looked down at her phone, now distracted. Slowly, I returned to the manga. Alright, that was kinda weird. How long was she looking at me, I wonder? Probably not long, a couple seconds. I wonder what she thinks of me and Natsuki being so close together. Does she threaten? There's no real reason to be. I shake these thoughts away. Back to Parfait Girls. You can think about all that later. <laughs> also, when you said, I can smell her, like, I, I almost laughed because I thought of the Morgan Freeman, I can smell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> 15, 20, 30 minutes passed. I finished the volume very quickly and ended up discussing my thoughts on Natsuki afterward. It was nice, mostly because she was very passionate about the series and it's always fun to talk to people who have a deep love for their art. A very refreshing, sharp contrast in the usual faceless nobody wannabe fans I found in the internet comment sections. I watched as the hands of the clock slowly reached 5 o'clock. On cue, Monica's phone started buzzing an alarm, which she quickly grabbed to shut off. She stood up, her laptop bag, her laptop bag and regular bag sunk somewhere on her shoulders. Well, that's the bell. Thanks for showing up today, everyone. Now, I want everyone to start thinking about what you want to work on tomorrow, because it's all we're going to be doing next meeting. Everyone nodded acknowledgement and started to grab their things. I stood up and dusted myself off. I stuck my hand out to Natsuki, who gingerly grabbed it and boosted herself up. Her cheeks went hot and I couldn't help but smile. Oh, Zero! Monica shouted my name from the back of the room. I still need to add you to the group chat, remember? I reached down to grab my bag and walked over to where Monica was at. So I was busy getting her purse together, though apparently she made herself busy by cleaning it. I pulled up my messaging app and handed Monica my unlocked phone, who quickly started tapping away. At the beat, she handed back, and I felt my phone start to buzz from the new notifications. Nancy drifted away from me and met with Sayori, who was already waiting to leave by the door. They both turned and smiled at me. Text me whenever you get home, so we can start planning right away, okay? All right. I started to unbutton my blazer. The weather outside looked cooler than it did earlier, and I was hoping to enjoy a nice breeze or two. I pulled my blazer over my arm. I start reading these volumes, so we can get back to it faster. Then we could start reading more on Sunday. Th that is, if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. I started to undo my tie as well. Sorry, wait. <laughs> We're just getting naked? <laughs> Wait, huh? <laughs> what was he doing? Well, I started unbuttoning my pants as well. <laughs> oh. Zip. You just hear, like, just, is this a sound clip? <laughs> so he's like, oh! <laughs> Natsuki puts her scared expression. <laughs> Natsuki puts her scared expression, and, and Sayori so puts her, like, oh, expression. Whoa! Oh! It's really hot here, guys. So I waited patiently for Natsuki to finish talking before speaking. Zero, are you still gonna walk home with me? I couldn't help but detect the hint of desperation in her voice. Did she think I was gonna ditch her for Natsuki? I wouldn't do that. Well, if the opportunity came up, I would let her know beforehand, but still. Well, yeah. You thought I was gonna ditch you? No, I was just double checking. He. <laughs> Natsuki gave a curious look to Sayori, but said nothing. Monica swiped her bag off the chair and dangled a pair of keys in her hand. Ready to leave? We all stepped outside and went our separate ways, Natsuki tagging with Monica and Sayori walking with me the opposite way down the hall. Bye guys! Sayori and, and I turned and waved. 
Oh, excuse me. Oh, wait. That was not Sarah. That was Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Natsuki had her headphones already in and almost didn't notice, but she turned and waved goodbye at the last second. We locked eyes for a moment. Text me, she mouthed at me. Oh, she's mouthing stuff now. Oh. <laughs> the walk home was rather uneventful. The pole strolled back. I tried to figure out how Sailor was feeling. Even so, she still seemed to be her usual bright self, talking about her plans for the festival and how excited she was for free food they were going to serve. Eventually, I gave up trying. Walked Sailor to her door, hugged her goodbye, and made my way home. By the time I got home, since I was being a streak across the sky, it looked beautiful. I unlocked the door. As expected, the lights were dimmed, which I switched on, and something was brewing on the stovetop. Glanced down at the pot. Looked like shabu shabu, a nice water-based meat and vegetable dish. Hungrily, I grabbed an empty bowl and labeled and ladled some of the dish into the bowl. I snatched another red moon soda. God, I love those things. And hurriedly took took everything upstairs. I was keep calling it Ramoon. I don't know how it's pronounced. I'll remember next time. I pushed open the door at my foot and set my bag down at the foot of my bed. I sat down in my desk chair, gently placing my meal onto the desk. I propped up my legs and took a swig of my soda. Seeing into my pocket, and I pulled out my phone and tapped to my music playlist. As I watched steam waft from my dinner dish, my mind wandered back to a literature club group chat. I was anxious to see if my name came up anywhere, and if so, in what context. I opened up my message app, messaging app and tapped to the chat, accurately named Literature Club with a flower and book emoji. I took a quick glance at the member list. Monica was listed as the admin with Sayori as the moderator. Here and Natsuki were regular members. Sayori's photo was a pan of glazed cinnamon buns. Did Natsuki make them? Using him, Happy Thoughts with a sun emoji. Yuri's photo was a stack of books, their binders showing off various titles. I noticed that the portrait of Markov was among them. Username, Yurik, Yurikata Girl, Yur, Yurikata Giri 7. <laughs> Nazi's picture was a chibi cat against a polka dot, the polka dot background in a similar way to the styles in the club poster. Username, Manga, Manga, Manga is, Manga is lit. I don't like Nazi in this. <laughs> Oh, wait, because literature. I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, I thought it meant lit, like, manga's lit, bro. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> no, manga's lit, so, like, it would be literature. Mm -hmm. Manga Soda was a selfie for doing a peace sign dressed in summer clothing, posing outside what looked like Tokyo Tower. Username, Little Monix 3. There we go. <laughs> now, I scroll through the previous chat logs. The last message is from this morning, with Yuri declaring she would be absent for the day and acknowledgements from the rest of the club. Setting up the earliest messages this seemed to date back as far as a few months. How long has everyone known each other? I kept thinking to myself as I read through a few of them. The chats were nothing of particular interest to anyone but the club, and my snooping self. It was mostly just general conversation about the club and weekend activities. Monica seems to be a very social person, going out socially with friends. Does she ever invite the club? There are also a few memes here and there. I kept swiping through the chat, searching for my name. Eventually, I found it. Don't know Monix 3. So who's the person you want to bring in the club? Just someone I know. Is it a boy? Sayori, don't be a mood killer. Boys are trouble. It wouldn't be terrible if there was a new member. Even if they were male, literature should be open to everyone and anyone, Natsuki. Hmm. Hee <laughs> hee. So who is it? Well, his name's Zero, and he's been of my best friend since we were kids. He really means a lot to me, and I've been trying to convince him to go. Aw, he sounds nice. I think I had a Zero in one of my classes. I'm gonna try to get him to go Monday. Can you make cupcakes, Natsuki? Only if you pay me. Do you take hugs as payment? I looked up. The smell of the shabu shabu whacked on my nose, distracting me from my reading. I set my phone down, and eagerly began to dug into my meal. <laughs> Do you take hugs as payment? <laughs> <laughs> as, as I ate, I remembered I still had to text a certain someone. This is my free hand. I put my phone back up and get to type in Nazi's number. That's not how you name poems. <laughs> Base 64! <laughs> no, I can't copy and paste that, so no thank you. It's beautiful. Ah! Daydreaming. I wish you could be anywhere with you. I see the colors shining bright with your feathers. You could fly away to heaven. I could do some day into the sparkling abyss and light. Running with your flashing light. Racing you. Taking flashlight to fly it to you on your feathers. Oh, right. 
Now it could be better. Abyss? If I wasn't. Is that how you spell it? Abyss? No, he fucked up. But <laughs> if I wasn't, oh, well, if I wasn't, if I wasn't here. All right, this is probably about Natsuki. Probably from Natsuki. <laughs> Just laughing about abyss. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's an abyss. honest mistake, really. It's one letter fucked up. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly just replacing the Y with an I. This is what he did. So come on now. It could have been a girl zero. Okay, fine. What Jesus. they what they <laughs> did there. <laughs> anyway, that is it. Uh, so yeah, we're on chapter 7 now. This mod only has 10 in it, so we're almost done. So that's interesting to think about. Anyway, uh, yeah, things are getting interesting, I guess. I don't really know. I mean, we had to choose between Sayori and Natsuki. We luckily chose Natsuki, oh, and Sayori's no. still depressed. It says, it says storm clouds. That's not good. <laughs> Sayori's, I mean, obviously Sayori's depression's going into high gear now, so that's gonna be a hoot and a half. High, <laughs> high gear. <laughs> Maximum overdrive. <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> anyway, uh, if you guys want to play this yourself, the link will be in the description down below. And yeah, this has been Zero. Peace.